I'd like to welcome to the show noted expert in creating GPTs, Bodie Grimm. How are you doing today, Bodie? I'm doing really good. However, I would like to point out, I put a disclaimer at the top of our show notes that says that I am not an expert and I know not even a fraction of a percentage about AI. Um, so yeah, I just want to get that. I just want to set a tone for people who might actually know about this stuff. Well, what kind of fun would it be if I didn't yank your chain just to start off? But it, you may or may not have heard from Bodhi before. Bodhi is the host of the awesome Kilowatt podcast, which is a podcast all about electric vehicles. And as I like to say, he's informative, he's intelligent, and he's also ridiculous, self-effacing. and makes me laugh every single time. So uh, big fan, big fan. Yes. Well, thank you very much. I'm also a fan of yours. I, I don't oh. have as many nice things to say about you as you do about me, but we'll we'll get through it. <laughs> Well, that's good. That's good. Okay. So everybody's heard of chat GPT. If you haven't heard of it by now, you've been under a rock somewhere, but I've started to hear about this thing called GPTs, not chat GPT, but GPTs and something about you can make them. And you said you could teach me how to make a GPT. And I don't even understand what it means to make a GPT. So on a very basic level, very basic, again, I'm not an expert in this, but on a very basic level, this is just a chat bot that does something specific for you. So if you are a person who is really interested in Marvel comments, comics, and you upload a bunch of information about certain Marvel comics that you're most interested in, you can create, I don't know, a little game show, a trivia game show, or you can just ask it questions and win bar bets or, or whatever. It's really a a tool that you can use in your personal life, but it's also a tool that you can use for business. And we'll talk about this a little bit later, but I created a GPT for the HPV vaccine uh, that gives people who interact with it information about the HPV vaccine and why they should get it. So you give it information to learn from, and so it's a very narrow, large language model then about that specific set of data that you hand it? Yes, uh, when we when we get to the point of actually doing the demonstration, <laughs> I'll show you that it it doesn't it's not always narrow. Sometimes it it reaches out beyond where it should, and you have to reel it back in. It's like a oh, toddler where you have to set boundaries. <laughs> so, could you give it everything I've ever written on podfeed.com? Well, it's funny that you mentioned that because I'm in our example today, we're going to create a GPT for podfeed.com. Sweet, sweet. Yeah. That was not a setup. That was, it we was not. haven't spoken. That is, that's fun. Yeah. Okay. So where do you start with this whole thing? So I'm going to enlarge this. Oh, oh, there he goes right away. He's letting people know that we are recording video. We haven't, we do not promise to produce the video. If no. I am going to produce the video, I'll let you know. But uh, my job is going to get Bodhi to not just say, as you can see here, but describe what he's <laughs> doing, because we want this to work for the audio podcast, too. The good news is I only have an audio podcast, so there's there's little chance I'm going to do that, but I might. All right. Allison, are you able to see the screen? Yeah. So where are we? You're starting at OpenAI. And you're logged in to ChatGPT4, which is the paid for service that I can't sign up for right now because they've halted uh, subscriptions because they have too many people wanting to throw money at them. Right. That is a that is a really good um, disclaimer to start with, is you can't actually use any of these unless you're already signed up. You can't create them and you can't view them. So it's a little bit of a bummer, but I can tell you since uh, OpenAI had their big AI day presentation, my experience as a ChatGPT4 user went from being incredible to being terrible. So, Oh, because too many people too many are doing people. it? Too many people, yeah. Okay, so it's probably good that they've slowed down while they scale up. I'm uh, yeah, and then they had a little thing where they fired their CEO and then brought him back and replaced the board. They're probably really busy, I'm guessing, and some people are going to be working through Christmas. Okay, so uh, ChatGPT four is twenty bucks a month if and when you are able to uh, join back in, and I'm and I'm sure we will be able to eventually. Sure. So uh, what are we gonna what are we gonna learn about today? What 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 is a GPT? Well, a GPT is a Okay, let's, let's break down the G, the P, and the T. 
uh, G is for generative, which refers to the GPT's ability to generate text, not just text that, um, just not like like random text, right? Like uh, I think there was an app for the Apple II, like Delilah or something like that. That thing could create random bits of text, but this is text that's relevant about the conversation you're having with the GPT. It's very human-like. And I think this is part of the reason why people are so worried about AI. Next, we have the P, which is pre-trained, which means that it's trained on an just an enormous data set that covers different languages and different formats of, of data. And then uh, you have the transformer part, which talks more about like, it's just a neural net and uh, that neural net kind of feeds in. And that also helps with the context of the conversation. Okay, so generative pre-trained transformer. And the transformer is taking, here's all this great data set. I'm going to generate some stuff and I'm gonna, the transformer is through the neural network. I'm going to spit out some stuff. According to my moronic understanding of it, yes. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, so why would I want to create a GPT? Well, I can give you a few examples why I created a GPT. You would want to create one because you're a nerd and you would really enjoy doing it because it's actually a lot of fun. Um, uh -huh. I, I created a GPT. My first one I created um, in my real job. I'm a firefighter. And one of the things that I struggle with, and I struggle with it even as a podcaster, as soon as you put a mic in front of my face, whether it's attached to a fire radio or whether it's attached uh, to this microphone that, that I'm talking on, I freeze up, I panic, and I have a really hard time. So that's honestly been one of the things that has keep, kept me from getting promoted. It's not the, the, the ability that I have as a, as a commander when we go on scene or whatever, or to talk on the radio, but it's my, my panic that happens when I actually uh, address a mic. And I also have a little bit of a stutter when I get really nervous, and it, it's, a, it's a struggle, to be honest with you. So these are, these are all good reasons to become a podcaster, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Also, I don't like being on camera, and I've got another <laughs> podcast that I'm working on more all exclusive to be on camera. So I'm facing awesome. your fears, folks. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so um, you wanted to create a GPT, though, for firefighters. Is that right? Yeah, so in, in the fire service, we have, and, and police ser uh, service as well, we have something called incident command. So when we go on a, with just a standard house fire, the first arriving unit on scene, doesn't matter if it's a battalion chief or an ambulance or a, a you know fire engine, they assume command of that scene, and then everybody has to do what they say. And okay. there is a certain way to present your information. And you, when you, when you, when you give your on-scene report, that needs to be done in a certain format. And then when you address uh, other units that are incoming, that needs to be done in a certain format. And you can practice that all day long driving in your car, but it doesn't give you any sense of, oh, this is real life. So I created a GPT that goes through dispatches, just like our dispatch does. It gives pertinent information, just like our dispatch does. It assigns random units to the call. And then it also assigns those random units to show up at different times. And I never know which units are going to show up. I use Dolly 3 in this GPT to give me a view five miles out from uh, the call that we're going to. So sometimes you might see smoke, sometimes you don't. And then I use Dolly to show the, the house that's on fire uh, when you arrive on scene. Dolly also shows the interior of the uh, building when you're inside. And it just kind of gives me an ability to practice, but then also I'm able to hand this off to somebody else in our department, or we're able to do it as a crew and we can practice and learn as a crew. Okay. So there's been a big leap here. It was a, a generative pre-trained transformer. So I can type in, you know, how big is a lump of coal? And it's supposed to answer the question in the way the data set has trained it. But all of a sudden you're talking about visual pieces and and timing and things like that that sounds like a completely different beast than what i thought a gpt could do oh yeah this thing it your imagination is your only limit as far as i i can tell at this point like you'll bump up against some things like for instance when i told gpt hey give me a two-story house on that's on fire and and the the gpt will actually or dolly based on the information the gpd gives it will actually um create a, a close enough 
image to what you get dis what's described to you in the beginning of the the scenario and um you know it's it's sometimes you have just, to tell it to go back picture. and go ahead I, I mean i i understand it can draw pictures dolly 3 can do can do pictures but i'm having trouble understanding how and maybe that's what you're going to talk through how i uh this this gpt is going to give us something time based so, I'm, I'm, I mean, is it a little video I'm going to see? Would it... No. Okay. So yeah, that's okay. I think I got you. So what I did was I broke it up into phases. So phase one is your dispatch and that will give you all of your units and your address. Is this what you're asking? So you're going to see, you're going to show me a, a list, a typed out list is, is dispatch and the units uh, that have been dispatched are engine 101, 102, 103, and uh, ladder 201, battalion chief 301. Correct. And okay. in my GPT, it's a list. it will give you an address that's in Phoenix. It's probably not real. And then when you're, when you've obtained that information, you just hit next. There's, there's some other stuff below there, Allison, that's only relevant to firefighters. So we don't need to talk about that. Um, and then it gives so us. He's, the, he's just typing in next, next, next into this right. model that he created. So if I don't stop it at each little phase, it will run the entire call for you. Okay. And you won't Which get isn't to do anything. To do. No, no, it's not. It's not. So it's not a good way to learn. Um, so in the second phase, it'll give you the pertinent information. It says the caller reports seeing flames from a second story window of the house, unsure if residents are home, right? So that gives okay. the, the incident commander an idea of based on the time of day and based on, you know, um, whether it's a weekend or not, if somebody is somebody home, or are they not home? We don't know. And then it creates as, as this a, image. As somebody who's trying to practice, uh, what is it you're practicing hitting next? No. So this is something that we do in most of the time we do this in a, in a classroom type scenario. So we're, we are being vocal about what okay. we see. So when it comes to um, the dispatch, somebody will read the dispatch to you. When it comes to the pertinent information, the battalion or the incident commander will be able to, to read that pertinent information. And then the next phase is it shows uh, 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 picture from about five miles out. Now, Allison, if you could do me a favor and explain the picture that's on the screen. Okay. Um, it's, uh, looks like a bunch of houses in a suburban neighborhood with what's probably a nuclear explosion size fire going on. It's pretty, it's pretty intense. Right. GPT goes hard on the scenarios. <laughs> like there, if I saw this, I would be immediately calling a first alarm fire because something else besides a house is on fire. Yeah, uh, so you have to take all of this oil refinery. Yeah, yeah, you have to take all of this with a little bit of a grain of salt, or you just tell GPT, "Hey, um, that's too much. Tone it down. Uh, tone it down a little bit." Okay. And but I promise, again, what if you're training yourself doing this? All I see you doing is hitting next. Are you saying in your head? Okay, I'm going to do a four alarm fire or number one alarm fire, whatever you said on this. Or are, are you trying to give responses that you would give in real life, like in your head? So, yes, for me, if I'm doing this by myself, I will just go through as um, as if I'm really going to fight the fire. Right. And I'm saying this out loud as if I'm practicing saying it into a mic. The next phase for this would be to type it in. But there's an even better part of this that I was going to get to later, but we might as well talk about it now is GPT, ChatGPT has an app. So I can go into the app, I can turn on the, the voice to text mode, or just you can just have a conversation with GPT, I don't even know if it's voice to text. And I can tell all I can tell the GPT all of this information, and it will give me feedback. It's at this point, it's not great feedback, but it will okay. give me feedback. Okay. I think I get the sense of what you're doing with this. It's, it's pretty crazy. Um, do you want to keep going with the, um, with the fire safety training thing that you've built here? Or do you want to start talking about how, how do you build something like this? No, I think we should get to how do we build something like this? I did. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we want to play. I did uh, practice some things uh, like I mentioned earlier. So when you're in the GPT, um, page there's uh, uh, on the left side of the screen you have your 
GPTs. So you, it, sometimes it's chat GPT and Dolly and maybe something else that you've used. So it's, it's got what you've used most recently um, on the left side of your screen. And then underneath those items is an explore tab. And then you have all of the GPTs. And these are pretty much all the ones I've created since I have been oh, good using gracious. GPT. He's done um, like 40 of these. One of them had chicken in them. Oh, no, this is like uh, all the way back to April when Sierra, my my daughter, uh, convinced me to sign up for the paid version. Wow. Okay. All right. So pretend we're just coming in from scratch here. We've got a little pencil next to chat GPT at the top, or we've got Explore, right? Right. So we want to go to Explore. Okay. Once we this go to build a new one. Yep. And we want to, uh, at the top, it says my GPTs and then create a GPT. Okay, for a specific purpose. Yep, we're going to click oh, on that. Oh, it's beta. It is beta. And mm -hmm. uh, it, it's pretty good, but it, it, it definitely has some hiccups. So now that we're in the chat GP, or create a GPT section, you have an option to create or configure. With create, it, it'll just ask you questions. It'll like walk you through creating a GPT, which is great. Because if you have no idea what you're doing, um, configure is almost completely <laughs> useless to you. Okay, so you basically just hit create GPT, and we've got now we've got create and configure are our two options. Correct. And it looks like there's a pane on the left for create or configure, and then on the right we've got a preview. Correct. So we're looking at GPT Builder for create. Correct. So it's it it welcomes you. Says, "Hi, I'll help you build a GPT," and uh, basically, all we're going to type in here is we're going to say what we want to make. So I'm just going to say, I'm going to keep this very simple, like three minutes to make a GPT for www.podfeet.com. Okay, nothing else. We don't have to tell it what we want to do with it. Nope. I mean, okay. once you kind of get your head around how these things are made, then yeah, you add a lot. Like my, my fire uh, commander uh, GPT, it's lengthy and, um, okay. but this work is going to be simple. So they're okay, going to, so all he, all he did was type into a little field. Uh, he said, I want to make a GPT for podfeet.com says, great. How about naming it podfeet helper? Does that sound good to you? How does that sound to you? I listen. That sounds fabulous. So you just type yes as an yep. answer. So you have just having a conversation with it. Just a basic conversation. Okay. And then it's going to go off. It's so updating it, the GPT. It just went through 18 years of blog posts. Well, okay. So that is, that, that's another thing that we have to talk about. But if you look here on the right, on the preview side, Allison, we have some mm -hmm. added things. It says, uh, tell me about the latest tech news on podfeet.com. We didn't add this. It did it itself. No. It says, how do I start a podcast? Discuss the legit, uh, lazy, uh, excuse me, latest gadget reviews on podfeet. And explain technology, explain a technology topic from podfeed.com. So, so that's, these are suggested questions you could ask the GPT at this point. Correct. Okay. And it's just a way to get somebody started in the process. And while we All were right. talking over here on about the preview stuff, we go back to the configure side or the create side, and it created a logo for your podfeed uh, helper GPT. Okay, one thing I like about this is it clearly knows that it's a podcast uh, blog because I podfeed.com, they could have come back and said, okay, we've got, you're a podiatrist here. Right. So it obviously <laughs> went through the data in some way to figure out that it was a podcast. It's got a little laptop, it's got uh, headphones uh, and a bunch of microphones. So, okay, that's a cool logo. That's perfect. Okay, so we're going to answer one more question and then we'll uh, stop this particular GPT. And the question we're going to answer is it's asking now let's refine the role and goal of podfeed helper considering its focus on podfeed.com what specific types of information or tasks do you envision it handling for example would it provide detailed summaries of podcast episodes or technical or offer technical advice or both so allison i'll okay. let you okay ooh so a summary of podcast episodes is kind of silly since I give everybody summaries of podcast episodes. Um, what about um, answering questions about what kinds of things I've reviewed maybe? Like uh, 
Okay, he's writing answering questions about product and software reviews. Sure. A lot of people say, I don't know how to find out whether you ever talked about X. And I always figured, well, there's a search bar. You could stick it in there, but uh, the search isn't that great. So you can. Uh, the GPT doesn't always end up being great, but it if over time, I will say it can get better and it can get worse. So in <laughs> this create mode, we have created this GPT, right? It, it's um, fantastic. It's going to work great. <laughs> However, over time, it's going to expand what it's what it was initially built for. And sometimes mm. that could be good. Oftentimes, I found that it's not. It kind of just goes right off the rails. And uh, you have to create another one. And another negative part of this GPT builder um, is when we navigate away from this, all of the stuff that we typed in on how we want to set that up, this, this all just, just disappears. So oh, if we so want to... it doesn't remember that. It might remember it, but you can't go back and be like, how... How do I answer these questions? So you, it's almost easier at that point rather than going through and trying to figure out how to change it through chat uh, to start all over. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. So now it's asking us, what should we avoid? And I kind of like that last thing it said there. It says, uh, this could include avoiding technical jargon. No, we love technical jar jargon. How about uh, no topics outside of the scope of technology and podcasting. Okay. You can copy that if you want. So is that all in is is that that's normal for Podfeed, right? Right. I don't okay. want to it talk about anything outside of technology and podcasting. So this is how I get away with that. Um instead of saying that, it said all questions. Oops. All questions. Out. Oh. <laughs> I got my mic in front of my keyboard. I can't see. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> uh, so what? you're you're Yo. he's writing out what he doesn't what this thing should not talk about. All questions outside of what you'll find on podfeed.com, what are verboten <laughs> should result in a yo mama <laughs> joke. <laughs> so all of my GPTs, except for the HPV uh, one, because we're actually showing that to a client. End with a yo mama joke, and they are the most polite yo mama jokes you'll ever see. Okay. 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 So if anybody asks uh, a uh, vaccination question of podfeed.com, it'll say, yo mama, so whatever. Yeah. And okay. and they're usually very complimentary. Every okay. now and again, you'll get one that's not, but it's not so even that bad. This isn't weather worthy or anything. No, no, no. It's not nothing like that. So over here, Allison, we have the preview while it's updating that. We have the preview. If we practice inside this preview, it'll work. But for whatever reason, until you save it and go back into it, it doesn't work great. So huh. we're going to okay. save it. I mean, while you're building it, for sure, practice it. Okay. But we're going to... So are we going to lose our create stuff right now? Yep. That's all yeah, gone. Yeah, we just lost it all. It's all gone. Yep. So if we go back into Explorer and we might... And we go to Edit a GPT... It says, welcome back. Can you, are you able to see all this? Yeah. It's saying, yeah. I just, it's a, it's 10 minute Tom. It's lost. It's uh, completely lost all information. Completely. So if you look over here in the configure part of things, it does have information that it created for okay. you. But you can't edit that. Oh yeah. You can edit it, but I've found that it's easier just to throw this out and do it the way you do it. Cause it, it just overruns you. But that that's okay. neither here nor there. We'll start that here in a minute. Um, okay, so you're gonna we're gonna go look at the Podfeed Helper GPT. It exists right now. Yep, we're ready. So I need to stop sharing that screen and uh -oh. share a different screen because. So am I gonna be? Are you gonna suddenly spring on me? I've got to think of a of a good question. Yeah. All right. Um, what's the best way to use alt tags? So alt tags are the uh, tags you put on images when you post them to social media so that they're available to uh, screen readers. So let's see. Podfeed Helper says, using alt tags effectively is important for both accessibility and SEO. 
I've never said that. Okay, well, this is where this goes off the rails a little bit, right? <laughs> it's the first question. Okay. So we said that, and I'm gonna. It's giving me a big old long answer, yeah, and I'm gonna ask, did you on. get this from? Did you get this from Podfeet.com? He's writing to it because it is literally still going. It's writing all kinds of nonsense. It's going. It's doing research with Bing. Now it's searching <laughs> your site. So. Uh, what, what the people can't see is that it's coming up with the um, like a, a like a little uh, search bar. I, it's not even a bar, like a search circle like a or a pop up thing. Yeah, and it it'll tell you what it's looking for. Now, now it has. After I asked, did you get this from Podfeed dot com? It has something that looks a little closer to what would be on Allison's website. Yeah. So what I love about this is it's like uh, you told the kid to to write a book report and the kid went to Wikipedia and copied and pasted it. And you said, did you write this yourself? And then it goes back and goes, OK, I'll write it myself. Right. Correct. Correct. So now it says things like uh, descriptive content. Uh, the alt text should go beyond basic descriptions for instead of just dog, include the dog's color, actions or other unique attributes. It sounds like something I might have said, you know, the last one was me. It says incorporating humor. Because sometimes I like to put in little Easter eggs in my alt tag. So it very likely could have gotten that from me. Now, look, if you look down here, we have the little uh, quote marker. Okay, there's a little quote mark. Uh, looks and it like says a, a link where it got click. the information from. Get your get your content out to more people by adding. And then it alternative kind of text. Alternative text. Oh, that's great. So that proves that it got some of this, at least from something I had actually written. Yeah. And All now... Right. Uh, we're going to ask it who won the 1986 Super Bowl. Oh, we should get a Yo Mama joke. We should. Okay. Okay. And it didn't. It's it, telling us it was the Chicago Bears. Correct. My favorite team. That's the, that's a, that was put in there. Uh, did you get this? <laughs> did you get this from podfeet.com? You should have a text expander snippet for that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Shit. so since obviously it didn't get it from here, now it says doing research for Bing. Now right. it switches it to researching the site podfeet.com. Correct. Okay, it says it does not appear to be available about the 1986 Super Bowl. Okay. Why didn't it give us a Yo Mama joke? I do not know. This is... And, to and, make you look silly on the podcast? Yeah, well, no, this is actually part of the, the point is hopefully, hopefully, when we do this the other way, it will be more... Uh, consistent. Okay, the other way. Yeah, so we're gonna go to con we're gonna go back to explore. So the first way we did it was we did create, but the other ones configure, right? Correct. And the and internet. It's spinning. Live demos. This is this is the best, right? I feel like Steve Jobs. Can everybody turn off your phone? All right. <laughs> there you go. So okay, we're so we're back to the create a GPT button, which is going to open this on another screen that I won't be able to see, right? Correct. So we'll go back. I got a lot of these open. So we're going to go back and share with you the new one. Okay. So this time we're going to go with configure, and this is going to be different. Yeah. Okay. So we're We've going to call this name one field. Podbot. Podbot, a description, and then instructions. Okay, for descriptions, he's putting in all things podfeed.com. Instructions. So I'm just going to say I want to create a GPT for podfeed.com. Podfeed you don't podfeed. have to give it all that www nonsense, yeah, yeah. right? Um, it's an AI for crying out loud. I you wouldn't think out. so, but sometimes you do have to be kind of specific. You, not always. Like I was putting in uh, weight wise cameras, and it was correcting it uh, because in Apple's infinite wisdom was connected to Waze cameras and it still knew oh. what I meant. Okay. But then I was putting in wise cameras and it had no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> and that was within two minutes of each other. So. Yeah. Um, okay. So we've got a, a name description and then the instructions is going to be essentially like what we talked about before. So he's got, I want to create a GPT for podfeed.com. Don't give me any information that is not found on podfeet.com. Okay. So in theory, okay, now it's going to say if the question is uh, not related, the information requested is not related, 
give us a yo mama joke. Correct. So just like what we did before, but it's under instructions. Okay, so we're we're just filling out a little form instead of just being completely free form. Correct. And this okay. is really this gives you a lot of flexibility if you find later, um, if you find out later that there's something not quite right, but you don't know where to go to fix it. If you have your instructions, you can just I move it all onto a text uh, program, a text editor, so that I don't have to. <laughs> So I don't have to keep recreating it. Re well, I keep re recreating it, but also like if you accidentally delete a section and you haven't back, you haven't saved it somewhere else, mm. uh, you don't get it back. I mean, that you makes could sense. Try okay. to control Z, but if you've already saved it, you're done. All right. So now you have to. The next field is uh, conversation starters. So tell me about Allison. Well, that's easy since there's a page called about me. Hopefully, yeah. it'll figure that one out. We'll see what it does. So conversation starters and what do they, um, what are they going to do? Is this just going to be, oh, oh, is this going to be the kind of questions that you would show to somebody saying, here's some typical things you could ask the pod bot. Correct. The pod bot. Okay. Got you. Tell me something cool. Why not buy a, a wise cam? Change it to buy instead of, but. Oh. I, that way it might make more, a little more sense. Nope, that's my fault. Okay. Um, All right. He's putting in a fourth one here. Oh, who won the 1986 Super Bowl? All right. All right. So All right. Uh, if we wanted to, you see this section here that says knowledge? Mm -hmm. We could upload PDFs. We could upload pictures. We could upload uh, Word oh, wow. docs so that it would be a little bit more um, accurate. So for my fire... Uh, GPT, I have the entire uh, volume two SOPs that we use, which is the standard set of guidelines that's about an inch and a half or two inches thick of standard everything that we do for procedures. every situation. Oh, okay, so you use that, you had a, a PDF of that or something that you submitted? Correct. Yeah, okay. so I just submitted that and that's what it goes off of. And honestly, when you have that kind of stuff, it actually works a little better as well. I would think so, because it's really specific. It's, I mean, that's that's narrow, right? Right, right. So then we have capabilities, okay. which we want to include. There's only three. Web browsing, uh, Dolly E, uh, Dolly, <laughs> Dolly image generation, and code interpretation. I don't mess with code interpretation, but folks who are fans of programming by stealth might find this interesting. Okay. And then, and then it says have, actions create new actions. What is that? That is something I do not understand. I do not have an authentication key, an API okay. key. So we'll uh, skip that part. Not something uh, for today. Okay. Oh, no. Did you just back out and lose everything? I hope not. Oh, no. You hit the wrong back button. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay. Share your screen again. It's popped away from me. Oh, okay. Okay. So we're we're done with the configurator. Uh, which we've done, we've given it essentially the same questions we had before, but we wrote our own, hey, you might want to ask this pod bot these questions. But other than that, you've pretty much told it the same thing you did in Create. Correct. And we, do we get to test it now? Yes. Actually, let me save this. So, so he's going to save, confirm, and this should let us see it uh, as a standalone. Okay. All right, here we are. Pod bot, all things podfeed.com. And he clicked on tell me about Allison. So didn't have to type anything because we already had it in there. Would you like says, to read it Allison or should Scherz, I? the creator and host of the NoSilicast, a technology podcast at podfeed.com. All right. You're known for your that enthusiasm about like... tech. So, <laughs> Yep, and it's got accessible in there. So, yeah, that sounds like me. Oh, I recommend visiting podfeed.com for more details. <laughs> okay. He's written, based on this information, give me a photorealistic, uh-oh, image of, I'm afraid, and he's going to say of Allison. Okay, so I did, and... Yesterday, I'm sorry, I can't create photorealistic images of specific individuals. You might want to go to the website. Duh. Okay. Uh, this is where you have to get creative. What do you think the creator of the podfeed.com looks like? <laughs> All right, I'll be curious to see if that works. Use Dali. Okay. What this, do you think the creator of podfeed.com looks like? So this actually, 
this actually worked. Let's see. Say yes. So it just said, I can't, or I can create an image based on a general description, but it's important to note this will not be a depiction of Allison Sheridan or any specific individual associated with podfeed.com. You sure you want to do it? So a fictional I, podcast host. I had to, I did this three or four times yesterday and uh, it worked every single time. So, you know, that was one day ago. And there's Allison sitting in front of a mic. She's got a Mac. Um, she's got two that Macs. That actually, I that looks like pretty pretty close to my my uh, microphone style. Yeah, uh, I'm about forty years younger, so I'm liking that. And it's but it's got the wrong um, it's got the wrong uh, pop filter, and the microphone isn't plugged into anything. It's hanging out no. in space with no boom arm. <laughs> yes, and uh, in the back, it's got a live uh, uh, sign to let everybody know that you're live on the air, but it says live. So, you know, I've noticed that with Dolly, it, it can't spell like even when you spell the thing you want it to, to, to write in there, it spells it wrong. Yeah, it can't spell at all. That, I, like I had it do uh, a logo. Uh, I said, have some bare feet and I wanted to say no silicast and uh, technology podcast with an ever so slight uh, Macintosh by or Apple bias. And it misspelled no silicast. It put like four L's in it. Yeah. Yep. Uh so I, I have this other podcast that I don't know if I can talk about yet, but we created our logo with uh, Dolly and mm-hmm. I had to, I had to like Frankenstein, like six or seven Dolly photos, uh, logos together to make ours work. But oftentimes okay. it spelled the name of the podcast wrong, despite the fact that we told it how to spell it. Okay. So uh, he just asked it, tell me about wise cams and should I buy one? And the advice says that uh, you should definitely buy one because here's all the great reasons you should do it. So I think that one's, that is not from podfeed.com. So let's ask. Because that is definitely not my current advice. It says as of April, 2023, camera, wise cams were popular for all these different things. Okay, it says, I can't access or retrieve information directly from podfeed.com or confirm a specific contest available there. Yeah, okay. my answer, my responses are on general knowledge. Hmm. That's kind of interesting. So I can so, tell you, like I had, I, I created yours in the morning and then I created the document that I wrote up for this show in the afternoon. And the morning answers were not as good as the afternoon answers. I do not know wow. if it gets better over time. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he wrote, try searching podfeed.com for the answer. And we have now what looks like a, a religious painting uh-huh. of uh, from like, I don't know, the 1400s. And this guy has got this, this uh, brush pointed up, but he's pointing at what looks like a, a little closed window box from Windows. Correct. <laughs> So this so must be what the Pope sees funny. when he opens the computer. I guess so. So, I mean, this was a spectacular failure, but <laughs> over time you could play with this as, as you get a little bit more familiar with chat GPT and creating GPTs, you can play with this and the product that you get um, most of the time gets better and better and better. Like my, I showed my command, um, uh, GPT to my chiefs at, that met my department and they were blown away by it because that up until now, this is not a joke. Sometimes people would draw on a whiteboard or draw on a piece of paper, what you saw on a fire. Um, it was not a, we, it was a very low tech way of doing these things. So despite the fact that both of these GPTs failed today, don't let that deter you from creating a GPT because it might, uh, if you put the time in, you put the energy in, you you might get something pretty magical. So let's let's be uh, perfectly clear. They were mostly impressed that it drew cool pictures of fire. <laughs> yeah, well, they were impressed that because it gives you the biggest thing is you. We have to keep because when when you go into a fire, you have to keep all of the units that are arriving on scene in your head. So you're not you, not mm-hmm. only are you uh, telling your crew what to do, incoming units are radioing in that they're on scene or staged in a specific location, and you're assigning those units. And at the end of your your scenario or real life fire, 
you need to relay all of that information back to the battalion chief who gets on scene and wants to know what you have and where everybody is. So all of that information is random. So you can't get stuck in a, you got this engine all the time. You get this ladder company all the time. You got this rescue all the time. It's all different. And it, it changes based on GPT's whim and, and the type of fire that changes and, and the information that you get back changes. So nobody has to be creative thinking of different ways to ask what feels like kind of the same question they've been training on all along. And honestly, they're not creative. Like we are, as firefighters, aren't that creative. And there's software that will do something similar to this. You have to build your own scenarios, but it costs $5,000 just to start using it. And if you want any add-ons, it's more than that. You got to buy a pretty beefy computer to make it work. So do you think that the success of that was based primarily on the fact that you were able to upload this very specific manual and that's what made it have good content to come back to you? No, I think, um, let me see if I can go to mine. I think the success, that is part of it, right? It stays within those rails, but I gave it very specific instructions when I did my, can you still see? Right. I don't want to get too deep back because yeah, yeah. we are getting low on time, but. But you can see, like I said, this is what you need to do on dispatch and you can see all the stuff that it's required on dispatch. This is phase two. This is what you need to do. Everything. So you were real specific on your instructions. Very specific. I wanted it to be, have enough room to be creative and create a scenario that maybe we hadn't thought of before, but I didn't want it to go off the rails. And when I was using the GPT builder, Every single time it went off the rails, you couldn't rein it in. Well, that's interesting. So the lesson is that configure is a better way to go. Create might be a good way to start just to play with it. But configure gives you uh, a little bit more control over where it's going to go because you can be so specific in those instructions and edit them and stuff. Yeah. And, and the biggest thing is, is later, if you find out that it's doing something you don't want it to do, you can go in and either create a new GPT and just copy and paste the instructions in right. or you can you can go in and you can try to edit it where you think you've gone wrong in its understanding of your instruction set i wonder whether it gets better over time like right now did it instantaneously literally absorb all of the data from i mean i've written a lot i write about five thousand words a week and i've been writing for uh 18 and a half years it, it can't have absorbed all that in the time that you hit go. No, I don't think it could have either. Um, yesterday, it was doing very good. And this also has to do a lot with how busy it is. So I was yeah. doing it on a Sunday at a, when I started. It was a Sunday at about 6 o'clock in the morning. And then when I went back to it, it was a Sunday about 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. So I don't know how many people were on it at, during that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also in, in the middle of the daytime, it airs out quite frequently. So it may just be that we're in a scenario where we have lots of people using it and it's just, it just throws up its hands, you know, freaks out, throws up its hands and crawls underneath a weighted blanket and says, I'm done for the day. <laughs> well, speaking of done for the day, I think I'm going to close this out here, but this is cool. I now understand what a GPT is, how to actually build one what to start doing to try to learn to give it the right kind of instructions. And it makes me jealous that uh, I can't get in yet and try it, but I guess it's good if it's getting hammered so heavily. And of course, like you said, the company's been through a little bit, a wee bit of turmoil over the last couple of weeks. So yeah, this is very cool. I appreciate you teaching us this Bodie. Hopefully it was informative and not boring. I wasn't bored a bit. I never am when I'm talking to you. I think you should put that on your uh, CV. Never boring. Well, I'll put it on. Allison is never bored when talking to me. I'll be very specific. <laughs> there you go. All right. If people want to check out the Kilowatt podcast, where would they go? Just search for Kilowatt podcast in your podcatcher of choice. It's pretty, pretty simple. Um, I have an email address that if you want to contact me, because if you have questions and I didn't explain something very well, it's Bodie, B-O-D-I-E at 918digital.com. That's great. All right. Thanks a lot, buddy. I appreciate it. Thank you, Allison.